So last week, Jesus was super hard on us. He asked us a lot. And you might remember a few weeks ago, we preached about growth. We talked about growth versus fixed mindset. And my guess is that Jesus knows what is true of human behavior, which is that most of us are only capable of growing so much at one time. And so while well, last week, if you missed that one, you can listen to it on YouTube. And so last week, Jesus says that people are going to fight against their family members, mother-in-law, against daughter-in-law and father, against son, and that being the gospel is going to bring division. And so this week, Jesus offers us comfort. Jesus offers us a little bit of reassurance. Jesus offers that being a disciple might be hard. It might be tricky. It might cost you something, but it also comes with great reward. That is the same thing that it says in Romans, that we have to die to sin so that we can have grace. Uh, the grace of God. And so today, I want to invite us, after we did such hard work last week, uh, to celebrate just a little bit. And so, if you brought your cup of water today because you read the worship information, and or if you have a cup of coffee or a cup of everything, anything to drink in front of you, I would like to invite all of you to unmute yourselves, hold your cuffs up, and say cheers. 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 Cheers to being disciples. Cheers to being part of the body of Christ. Cheers to knowing who we are. I think it's so interesting today that Jesus invites us to give a cup of cold water to other people to drink. But what's so interesting about that is that the thing that Jesus offers us first is our baptism. So when I was a kid, my parents were super church people. You know who these people are, and you can look around your screen and probably see many of their faces. So um, my dad's in the choir, my mom's the volunteer secretary, my mom's the volunteer librarian. Um, my dad does a lot of the uh, handy person work around the church. Um, he fixed a lot of the electrical problems, did a lot of the tech. Uh, we spent a lot of time um, at church as I was growing up. And the thing about it is my parents took our faith very, very seriously. And one of the things that my mom took very seriously was our baptisms. And so my baptism anniversary is August 19th. And the reason I know that is because every year to this day, 41 years later, my mom sends me a card and calls me and texts me and tells me happy baptism birthday. I have two younger sisters. And when we were growing up, what happened on your baptism birthday is that you got to ask mom to make whatever you wanted for dinner. Nobody else had to say. I, being the annoying high maintenance child, always asked for teriyaki chicken and stir fry in the wok. I'm pretty sure my mom only used her wok about once a year on my baptism birthday, um, but it was yummy. And here's what happened during your baptism birthday meal. Your baptism candle would get put on the table along with all of the other candles. And in the ways that family stories go, every year, three times a year, because there were three girls in my family, my dad would complain that he couldn't actually eat by candlelight because he couldn't see to get the food into his mouth. And every year, the rest of us would be like, oh, daddy, it's fine. You know where your mouth is. We're eating by candlelight. We only do this three times a year. And then at the end of dinner, my mom would say, what happened on the day you were baptized? 
And the correct answer to this question was, that's the day I know for sure I became a child of God. That's the day I know for sure I became a child of God. Being a child of God matters. Being a child of God is how we get grace. Not the cheap grace where we're like, okay, well, I'm a child of God and I was marked with the cross of Christ forever and I can splash water on my head and remember my baptism. Not that kind of child of God. The kind of the child of God that we talked about last week and talks and that Jesus talks about this week about righteousness and about disciples and that Paul talks about in Romans, the wages of sin is death. And so once we're baptized, what happens is it doesn't make us magically perfect. It doesn't make our lives magically all better. It doesn't mean that everything is easy or that we have 100% of everything we need in life. But it does mean that we have been forgiven. It does mean that we have been washed. It means that we can trust that if things get tricky and if things get hard and if we don't want to see the pain of others or if we don't want to be disciples or if we really are not sure we want to give up the sin, Jesus says, come, remember your baptism, be washed, and then you can try again. Sometimes we think that our baptisms or believing in Jesus or being disciples is freedom from things. It's freedom from the wages of sin being death. It's freedom from not knowing who you are or who you belong to or why your faith matters. I want to invite you today, as Jesus tells us and as Paul tells us in Romans, to start thinking about your baptism as freedom too. Freedom to, like Jesus said, be righteous. Freedom, like Jesus said, to be a prophet. Freedom, like Jesus said, to be a disciple, even if it costs you something. Freedom, like Jesus said, to offer other people a cold glass of water. As we have been talking about these days, offering someone a glass of water, offering them the freedom to know Jesus and the freedom to care more deeply about the world and about themselves and about others is simply hitting a few buttons on your computer or on a text message and liking and sharing. In some ways, the barriers to coming to online church are so much lower for many people who are not used to church than coming to an in-person service. The other thing that we have freedom to, we have freedom to be connected. We have freedom to be connected to the whole entire body of Christ. Being baptized in Jesus is not this, I'm baptized, so I'm fine, so I can do whatever I want, and I know that Jesus will forgive me. It's not that at all. It's freedom to want to share. It's freedom to be truly connected to others and to the community around you, to know how deeply loved you are, and to want to share that deep and abiding love with others. It's not the freedom to be independent. It's not the freedom to not care about what's going on in other people or about their pain. It's actually the freedom to care about their pain. It's the freedom to know that when other people's pain gets so hard, you can barely stand it in your own brain, that Jesus is there to take the rest of that pain. When I was a hospital chaplain and I would sit with people as they just learned that their loved one had died and their stories were so heartbreaking. I knew that I wasn't there alone. I knew that Jesus was there with me. I would imagine myself as just a channel where their pain went in, went through the top of my head, straight up to Jesus. 
Because what my baptism gives me is the freedom to know who I am, who I belong to. And that gives me so much capacity to care about others. It's freedom to show up for your community. It's freedom to show up for the world around you. Because here's the other thing it is. It's the freedom to try again. Because we're human, we're all gonna mess it up. I tried something this last week and there were some problems with it and I had to issue an apology letter about it. And you know what, it was hard and there were definitely some tears involved, but you know what I know? I know that Jesus is gonna forgive me and that's what's gonna give me the ability to try to do it again. And that's what's gonna give me the ability to not shut down to not give up. It's not freedom from ever being stressed out. It's not the freedom from caring about others. It's freedom to show up for each other and to know that you can be forgiven and that you can try again. We have an incredible freedom to love one another to offer each other cold drinks of water, to offer each other the gospel, and to remember that we are baptized children of God, no matter what, no matter how many times it takes, no matter how many times the wages of sin is death in our lives and we pick ourselves up and we keep going and we try again, no matter how many times that takes, we have the freedom to have security and knowing we are loved, the freedom to try, the freedom to be more connected, and the freedom to know that it will be all right. I want to invite you, if you have water that you are willing to touch, maybe instead of coffee, if you have been baptized, to get some water on your finger and draw a cross on your forehead. And, or if you um, have other people in your house, you can um, do it to each other and repeat after me. I am a blessed, baptized and loved child of God, no matter what, forever. Amen, amen.
Thank you, Amy. That was beautiful. Receive these prayers, oh God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. His, Jesus says we offer cups of water to each other. Can't do that physically, but by cheersing, offer it to each other. Unmute themselves. Mother. Yeah, I click the right button. <laughs> Yeah. All right, everybody ready? No. Yeah. All right, almost. Okay. okay. Cheers. 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 Peace be with you, Mom and Dad. Cheers. There Peace you go. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Love the hair. Peace be with you. 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 You, 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 you,